So yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, if, I don't know if like correlated is the word here, but you know, the Texans were desperately trying to get Demico Ryan's. Or the, the Bron- excuse me, the Broncos were desperately trying to get Demico Ryan's. If you believe the report, no dice. So instead, they end up, uh, you know, going after Sean Payton. That news breaks, and then presumably, you know, we have a situation where Demico Ryan's has told the has told the Broncos no, and then is telling the Texans yes, and those two. Um, those two teams are going through the process of getting the information out and sort of, you know, like leaking it out through the media, which is just how, just how it works. Um, let's, I guess, I mean, is Tamika Ryan's taking this job? Like, the, the great hire by the Texans. Cause he was the coveted guy outside of the Sean Payton, you know, the Sean Payton sweepstakes. And, and, and I, again, like I, yeah, I thought Sean Payton was going back to broadcasting. Um, but D'Amico Ryan's highly coveted, the San Francisco defensive coordinator. He's been getting the Robert Sala treatment for most of the year where they cut to him on the sidelines, a uh, little bit more calm, former uh, Texans player. I think that's probably the connection here. Is he just, he, he's got the roots in Houston, right? I mean, is, is it as simple as that, Sully? Well, it was interesting because JJ reported earlier this week or a couple of days ago that there was, you know, maybe some question by the Texans ownership there. D'Amico Ryans would even want to be the head coach because if you remember when he was a player, he did sue the NFL and the Texans and NRG Stadium for the field conditions there. And JJ reported that that wasn't the case. Ryans looked at the Texans job as his number one choice. So this is a great pairing. Obviously, there's the history there. But if you're Ryan's, yeah, you you know, maybe you go to a place like Denver where there's a little bit more established. But I like the idea that it's a little bit more of a blank slate. And it's a team that maybe doesn't have the expectations right out of the gate that, say, a Denver does. I mean, we, we look at that team now with Sean Payton to say they should be contending for a playoff spot. The Texans, it's a little bit more of a slow burn. You have the number two overall pick. You have the number 12 overall pick that you got from Cleveland in the Deshaun Watson trade you're going to build this thing up obviously first trying to find a quarterback but for a first year head coach like D'Amico Ryans this is a scenario where you can kind of take a step back you don't have the pressure of winning right away build the foundation in 2023 and then move forward it's not like Denver where you have to contend immediately it's not like Arizona where you have to contend immediately because you have quarterbacks like Wilson and Kyler Murray I like this spot for him yeah, and, and you know, uh, to Tyler's point real quick on the lawsuit, that was settled in 2016. Uh, so, I, you know, that feels like water under the bridge is something seven years ago. I'm sure he wasn't even thinking about it. And one thing is that just because he played for the Texans, it's easy to forget that he was good. He was rookie of the year in 2006, and he spent the first six seasons of his career in Houston. He was a beloved player. And so, obviously, you have the same ownership group. Uh, still in charge of the team. And so I absolutely think that plays a factor. And one thing, if I'm taking the job, if I'm D'Amico Ryans and my options are Houston or Denver, I'm taking the Houston job. And I, I you know, my, my big reason is if you go to Denver and you fail in your first season, this is kind of what I was saying with Sean Payton is that that's going to fall on you and you're a first year coach and people are going to say you couldn't handle it. You're going to get Nathaniel Hackett out of there. But if that happens to Sean Payton, Sean Payton can say, no, it's Russell Wilson's fault. I'm going to get another quarterback. So D'Amico Ryans wouldn't have that power. And so then you're also in a much tougher division with the AFC West. And the, and the AFC South, this guy could build a contender. I mean, you're talking about you're, you've got to be a 9-8 and eight Jacksonville team. That is the, the target right now. The, the Titans are kind of figuring out their identity and, and how to go forward. The Colts, have they don't even have a head coach yet. So... I think if I'm Ryan's, I feel pretty good. As Sully mentioned, they have two picks in the top 12. You can get a quick rebuild, and the one thing you need is a franchise quarterback. So that's going to be the, the, all eyes on that now. But if I'm Ryan's, uh, I, I feel really good about where I'm at and my chances of winning this division within my first three years on the job. Wow. That's, 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 right. bold. that's a bold take. Three years. I don't think it's crazy. Um I'm trying to sort of think what my, my issue with the Texans and it's not, I mean, look, I think D'Amico Ryan's, you look at the job he's done with this defense um, and they were good under, really good under Robert Sala, but they maintain, like there was a, you know, Sala leaves and it's, it's, it's not like he's just winning with Sala's players. You know, this is, this is a defense that has a lot of really good players, but he's getting the most out of them there. They like, there's just, you watch them play and you can tell that there is a very, D'Amico Ryan's ish level of play from them. 
Houston, he where he played, I think, uh, sorry, how many years did he play in Houston? What was it? I don't I think he made the I don't think he was an all pro, but I know he made the Pro Bowl there. He was he was there, so he was drafted by Houston um in the second round, 33rd overall, 2006 NFL draft. Oh, won the defensive rookie of the year. What am I talking about? He was first team all pro, all pro and was there for six seasons before he played in Philly for the final four seasons of his career and then leaving to get into coaching and has risen up very quickly. I mean, I mean, this is a quick ascension for him to a head coaching position, uh, but it shouldn't be that surprising because of the job that he's done, um, you know, as a, as a coach in, you know, in, in, and also like San Francisco just fires out assistant coaches that become head coaching head coaches. I mean, it's crazy how many guys are either coordinators or head coaches around the league that were in San Francisco. I think, um, you know, Houston would presumably have more patience with D'Amico Ryans because he played there because they drafted him. Cause I mean, like even if Cal McNair, you know, wasn't doing a whole lot of work in 2006 and, you know, when, and, and through like 2011 when, or 2011, yeah. When D'Amico Ryans was there, he was still around the building. He still knows him. He was a guy who's a prominent figure in those Texans teams uh, went to two pro bowls. And so I think because of that, you're going to give him like if you're Demico Ryan's, you feel like one, I want to go turn around the team where I started my NFL career. Two, I'm going to get some leeway here, and then three, because of as Breach pointed out, you don't have the Russell Wilson pressure there. You know, you can, you have time to go find a quarterback. You can get one with the second overall pick. You can take it. You can take there's some. It wouldn't be crazy to take two defensive players in this draft either with those two top 10 picks. If you believe that that's what, like, that's how you can get to where you want to be with D'Amico Ryans. Um, so let's grade the trade. Sully, what uh, grade would you like, or grade the, uh, grade the hire of D'Amico Ryans? What grade would you like to give it? I give it an A, and I'm right there with you, Will. I do think that you could take two, you know, defensive players, and I don't know, maybe even contend right away with Derek Carr or something. You know, in that division, you can have a lot of moves there. If you bring in Jimmy Garoppolo or whatever you want. I mean, like, you are not that many steps away because of the division that you're in from contending. I would consider more of a slow burn. But to your point, too, in terms of the leeway, you were talking about an organization that fired head coaches the last two years after just one year. This feels like there's going to be more stability here. Schefter is reporting that it's a six-year deal. I think that that's a long time for a first-year head coach. Typically, it's like a four-year contract, right? So, like, they're telling us it's a six-year deal. We're bringing this guy to build something for the long haul. We have two first-round draft picks. Even our second-round pick in other drafts would be the first pick in the second round, 33rd overall. They are building something for the long haul. They're going to have patience. It's going to be a slow burn, but I think that this is an organization heading in the right direction with D'Amico Ryans. I give it an A. Yeah, I give it a just because I feel like this is the first time in five years that the Texans have made a smart decision about anything. I mean, this team has been so dysfunctional. Uh, it, it just ever since they led the Chiefs 24 to nothing in that divisional playoff game, they have gone straight downhill since then. Whether it's been Bill O'Brien, Deshaun Watson, uh, and, and you know, you look at those coaches that you know, after they fired Bill O'Brien and Romeo Cornell took over, and then David Cauley for one year, then Lovey Smith for one year, and Smith and Cauley really felt like placeholders. I almost felt bad for them taking the job because it was like they're. they're you're set up for failure. There is no way you're winning more than five games with the roster you have. And it does feel like Ryan's is finally that guy that is going to be given a chance. If he goes four and 13 next season, he's not going to lose his job. This is a guy that, you know, Sully mentioned the six year contract. He's going to get at least four years. I mean, we see guys get fired. Matt rule signed a six year contract. He didn't last very long, but this is not that situation. Uh, so, and again, like we've been saying, the AFC South is wide open. He's going to have time to build a winner and, uh, you know, defense wins championships. You got a defensive coordinator in there. Now we just got to see who he's going to bring on his coaching staff. Cause he is going to need a smart offensive mind, uh, to handle that side of the ball. And, uh, and then you got Nick Casero as the general manager, uh, building the Patriot way. So this is, it, it just feels like a good combo all around for once in Houston. Yeah. I'll give it a, I'll give it an A. I mean, I think. And by the way, uh, Billy, tell us about that tweet I sent you. So Adam Schefter, little, little ESPN on NFL media crime. I love it. <laughs> tweets out, timing of today's two hires was completely coincidental. Broncos were zeroed in on Sean Payton and didn't make any contact this week with Demeka Ryan's worst agent. <laughs> there was focus on Payton and Houston on Ryan's. Um, 
Wait, and mind you, just in case anybody skipped through the Sean Payton part, we literally have a tweet uh, that uh, Rap Sheet sent out a mere 13 minutes before that that said the Broncos spent the entire day trying to hire D'Amico Ryans and only pulled the trigger on the Sean Payton trade uh, after Ryans committed to the Texans. If one wanted to speculate wildly on this, one could note that Early in his career, Adam Schefter covered the Broncos, and early in his career, Ian Rappaport covered the Patriots, where Nick Casario worked. I'm just saying, if if one wanted to speculate wildly on that, um, I think that Schefter's uh, Schefter's Broncos information is usually pretty strong. It it is it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that the I mean I know we kind of ran with it, but it's like it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that the Broncos were. Do you think Sean Payton's like? Oh, yeah, sure. Just let me know what happens with D'Amico Ryans and you're going to... Well, how does this keep happening with the Broncos if it's all coincidence? Remember the Aaron Rodgers thing? Once Five minutes after he signed his new contract with the Packers, the Broncos had a deal for Russell Wilson. And nice. everyone was like, oh, they oh, th that was their backup options. Kind of the same. So it's just all coincidental. I, it's a little crazy. Yeah, it's like, it's like you know, you, you, you go to a store to eat some vanilla ice cream and... They're out of. I don't. I don't know. What, I don't know what the, the, the analogy I'm going with here. But the point being is, I give it an A. I think it, whether or not that whether or not they were in competition with the Broncos for D'Amico Ryan's, the fact that they got, I think the same reason you give Deshaun Payton a good hire is they got the biggest the biggest guy in the whole cycle. The 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 Texans who are have fired a coach in back to back years for like a one a single year a, a black coaches in back to back years. I mean, I'd be a little hesitant. Whether I was a white coach, black coach, whatever coach you are, I'd be a little hesitant to roll into Houston and assume that you're going to get runway. But they they still convinced, arguably the best, um, the best. Uh, I mean, you could say best candidate or at least best like coordinator style candidate, a young coach, a highly respected coach, a highly coveted coach, to come to Houston where they don't have a quarterback, they do have assets. Um, you know, you've got some changeover and in, in, you have some questions about ownership and you have some changeover in the front office. Like to convince D'Amico Ryan's to come back, I, I don't know, pretty strong. I would guess that he's got some pretty good, um, I won't say run of things, but I would guess that he's got some some leeway and some control there. We and remember, curious you remember too, Jack, e the Jack Easterby's gone too. I mean, he was kind of a, a puppet master of that organization for a while. He was, he was gone yeah. now, so I it would, really I is would, more traditional. Yeah, I mean, look, you don't have to, you know, you have to cape up for Nick Casario. Uh, <laughs> I know, I agree. I think that, um, ooh, could J.J. Watt go back and be a, God, J.J. Watt is assistant coach with D'Amico Ryans. Mm. There's a uh, picture here where, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see where J.J. Watt tweeted out a picture of he and D'Amico Ryans on that Texans defense. Man, the Texans were good for a while, too, with him. I, I, I don't know. I, li I like the hire. I think it's two, I think it's two really good hires. I actually think all three hires so far this cycle have been really good. It's partially because of sort of the process they went through and the candidates available and the jobs available. Very impressed. Um, look forward to the list that are put out about these various, uh, uh, these various hires because inevitably it's going to be like three A or like three A's, one like C plus, and then a, a giant F minus for Jeff Saturday. All right. Um, I think I actually got to go do HQ. So, That'll do it for us. Oh, well, winners and losers really quickly. Sorry. Winners, uh, winners and losers. I'll say a, um, I'll say the Texans are a winner, as I mentioned, for, for being able to pull D'Amico Ryans. Even though he played there, I think it's still a surprising pull, uh, given everything we know um, about the Texans and sort of where they're at. I'll go with the San Francisco 49ers. They lose their defensive coordinator and maybe more assistance because typically they take guys off that staff. I'll go with every other team in the AFC South being a loser because I think uh, the Texans are going to be much better. Usually, if you're Jacksonville or Tennessee, you're thinking, oh, we just walk over the Colts and Texans, uh, but not so much anymore. It's going to be completely competitive division now. Uh, it, it's going to be a lot stronger from top to bottom, I think, with Demeke Ryan's in Houston.